Hello the internet, I'm Gav. Welcome to the slow-mo guy. A lot of the videos I try and make are around familiar subjects, something you may have seen a few times or even used, but then you get to see it in slow-mo. This video is nothing like that. Um, it's about a very specific piece of lab equipment called an ultrasonic homogenizer or a sonicator, as it's sometimes known. There's a bunch of applications for this, but one of the main ones is you can use it to mix liquids that wouldn't usually mix, like oil and water, for example. And how it does it is by vibrating this tip, this little metal tip, tens of thousands of times per second. This one will vibrate up and down just slightly, about 30,000 times in a single second. And we're gonna see what that looks like in slow-mo. Obviously, because it's 30,000 times a second, if I use the regular Phantom Flex 4K, we're limited to 1,000 frames a second in 4K, which means it will be moving 30 times up and down in a single frame. That's no good. We do need to go faster. We ideally need to be at frame rates higher than 30,000 frames a second. A lot of the time in an actual science lab, you'll see these in their own little enclosures with a door, but um, this isn't as fancy. This is the cheapest one I could find and it didn't come with any of that. So we're just gonna stick it in this little clamp that I may or may not have stolen from the set of Planet Slow-Mo. As you know, on this channel for 90% of the videos, we use the Phantom Flex 4K, which is a very lovely 4K image at 1,000 frames a second. But when we need to go faster than that, we typically use one of the V-series cameras. This is the 2511 supplied by Destin, which is a science camera, much lower resolution, but much faster frame rate. Okay, let's start with just a simple glass of water just to see its effects on the liquid. Got a macro lens on, so we'll get really close to the tip. I'm gonna start at full resolution, which will give us 28,500 frames a second. Ooh, so loud. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, so what we're seeing here is cavitation bubbles. Basically, the sonicator is moving so fast and so frequently that it's just tearing these little voids in the water where a bubble forms, but there's not actually air in there. It's just a gap in the water. And then the forces opposing that cause it to collapse in. But because the sonicator is moving so fast, they're constantly opening and closing to create these shock waves all throughout the liquid. And every time one of these bubbles implodes, it also creates heat. And it seems to be causing the liquid to flow straight down from the middle and then around the sides. So I think if we do this again with oil on the top, we'll see the oil get sent down the probe so here I'm adding some vegetable oil, quite a, quite a large serving, but this should mix them together into a sort of emulsion. Oh yeah, so you can see the, the flow it creates all of the bashed liquid goes straight down the middle of the tip. So all the oil is then drawn in to fill that void. So it actually gets mixed down the probe and then spreads out to the sides. You can see here that the oil is sending the tip out of focus, but you can see here it's smashing the oil into tiny particles. Okay, we've seen what it does submerged in liquid. Now I just want to see what it does to a single drop balanced on the top. I'm going to film this about 40,000 frames a second. Oh, I just instantly vaporized. <laughs> just smashed into about a million pieces. It even got the stuff that I'd spilled further down and it collected in the base of the sonicator head. Whoa! Oh. It looks so big, it scales it up so much. <laughs> this is like this is like a scaled down version of what the scarecrow was trying to do in Batman Begins, where he's trying to use the ultrasonic weapon to vaporize all the city's water. Just absolutely aerosolizes all of it, just makes it completely breathable. I can tell because of the way the camera can't decide what color to make them. Some of these droplets are smaller than a single pixel on the sensor. 
and it looks as though as the sonicator is moving up and down, the downward movement is drawing the air in to it. So that as the droplets are coming back around, they're getting sucked back on and just punched even smaller. All right, let's just do one obscenely fast so we can actually see the proper movement of the sonicator head. We won't see much in terms of detail here because we're not even 400 pixels wide in this resolution, but we do have 171,000 frames a second. And I need so much light for this shot that even just slightly offsetting my backlight looks completely pitch black. So the only way I can see anything is by shining the light directly in the lens hole. This, this, the exposure time is so low that the light refracting through the droplet isn't even bright enough. Okay, I'm talking to you now from the edit as we analyze this clip. I want to find out how long it takes for the sonicator to do a full up-down cycle. So I'm just going to speed it on a little bit here so we can see it. If we do the maths and divide one second by 30,000, it gives us 0.000033 of a second. So if I pull up the absolute time here, we should be able to look at time directly for the answer instead of using a calculator. Firstly, pay attention to how slowly the second is ticking by. Even our milliseconds are ticking by painfully slowly at this speed, so we're mainly looking in the microsecond area. I'm now going to slow the footage down in post to about 10%, giving us the equivalent of almost 2 million frames a second playback. And then we'll pick an arbitrary up and down cycle and just pay close attention to the time. Yeah, so that is, that's very close. That's a difference. That's 0 0.000035 uh, as opposed to what we calculated there with uh, 0 0.00033. So slightly slower than 30 kilohertz, but uh, definitely in that ballpark. <laughs> Interestingly, there are some forms of humidifiers that you can buy which use ultrasonic tech like this to smash water up and get it in the air. It's one way of humidifying a room. Doing it one drop at a time though, not recommended. It will take you much, much longer to increase your relative humidity. I now want to learn whether an apple enjoys being vibrated at a very fine point at 30 kilohertz. Burning it, whoops. Sonicated the phantom there a little bit seems to be causing such tiny concentrated pockets of heat that the apple is just immediately burning at that point. It's crazy that if my frame rate is below the frequency of the sonicator, it just looks like a blur because it's moving back and forth so many times. The picture of it is being taken at a different spot each time, so it just looks like a, a blurry, slow thing when it's actually a supremely fast, punchy thing. This is bizarre. I'm not sure whether this is creating any cavitation bubbles in the liquid of the apple or whether it's just sheer friction. We should try this on something that doesn't have any moisture in it. Also it seems to be able to cook its way through wood. Whoa! <laughs> There's no way I'm not wrecking this thing. This is just the friction we're dealing with. This could potentially be used as a, as a fire star. I bet you could get an ember if it's, if it's actually causing this wood to smoke. This, is a, this thing's a fire hazard. Will it go through the cloth of my lab coat? Okay, three, two, one. Up oh, immediately. <laughs> Absolutely no resistance at all. I'm gonna try an old t-shirt. I can find. There this is. <laughs> Alright, I've blocked your view of that, sorry about that. Um, you'll be able to see it on slow-mo though. <laughs> yeah, then one of, when one of the holes gets big enough, the whole thing just <laughs> smashes through. 
Well, there we have it. Some very interesting and rather bizarre footage of the intended use and also some unintended use of an ultrasonic homogenizer. I may have wrecked it. It is looking slightly charred at the end now. Um, I mean, I don't really plan on using it again. I'll stick it in a box just in case though. If you can think of any other lab equipment that would be very interesting to see how it works in slow-mo, let me know in the comments. I might be able to get my hands on some and do another one of these. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you wanna be alerted to new slow-mos, make sure you subscribe and hit the old bell and give it a like if you liked it. If you didn't, I am incredibly sorry. Hopefully you'll like the next one. <laughs> see you next time.